Welcome to another episode of Tools of Our Trade. I'm CJ and I'm one of the restoration carpenters at Thomas Jefferson's Poplar Forest in Bedford County, Virginia. Join me as we discover some of the tools and techniques that were used to build Jefferson's Forest Retreat. Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Tools of Our Trade. What do Monticello, the University of Virginia, Poplar Forest, and these model Doric columns have in common? They're built on the foundations of classical architecture, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. This is a two-part episode, and in today's episode, we'll be talking about the basic building blocks of classical architecture, the column and the entablature, and later in part two, we'll look more in detail at the construction methods and how they're made. Thomas Jefferson was enthralled by the aesthetic beauty and mathematical perfection of the designs in classical architecture, and he believed them to be the most representative of the ideals of the new American Republic. The origins of classical architecture are thousands of years old, and if it wasn't for the rediscovered first century BC works of a Roman architect named Marcus Vitruvius Polio, the resurgence of those styles may never come to exist during the Renaissance as neoclassicism. Though Vitruvius's books were well known by the late 18th century, Jefferson found his inspiration in the designs of Andrea Palladio's four books of architecture, even calling it his Bible. All right, enough of that. Let's take a look at this model here. As you can see, We've got two vertical columns supporting a horizontal timber. If you're at all familiar with construction styles, you might recognize this as a basic post and beam structure. This is the fundamental element in classical architecture. In fact, the Greek translation for architect is chief builder, chief from the Greek archi and builder from tekton. And this timber here, across the top of the columns is called the architrave, meaning chief beam. This chief beam distributes the load of the superior elements down through the columns and into the foundation. In ancient construction, the rafters, the roof, and gutters would be placed on top of this. Over time, these parts of the building that modern builders might consider as part of the soffit the fascia and the rafter tails would be ornamented especially for large temples and places of cultural importance. This ornamentation and design would continue to develop into interior elements as well, notably as decorative molding around doors and windows. In the next episode, we'll learn more about interior architraves and how they were designed and constructed for Thomas Jefferson's Poplar Forest. Until then, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.